Welcome to another tutor short provided by the Educational Support Services Department of Lehigh Carbon Community College in Snexville, Pennsylvania, which is just outside of Allentown. These videos review key learnings for the science courses provided here at LTRIC. And please remember that the Educational Support Services Department does provide walk-in tutoring five days a week. In this video, we will be talking about structural isomers, which is important in organic uh, chemistry. So a structural isomer uh, are compounds that share the same molecular formula, but differ in their structural arrangements. And the best way to kind of show this is to give you an example here. We're going to use uh, a six carbon organic compound as an example and you know the f most common way if you were going to write this molecule is you would draw out the six carbons in a straight line and that's uh, one way to show a six carbon uh, this C6H14 uh, again the hydrogens are around the, the carbons but I won't show you the hydrogens but you could also arrange six carbons by doing a four carbon chain and then off one of the carbons have a two carbon chain. So here we still have our six carbons. If you added up the hydrogens you'll see they'll be the same as the straight chain of six carbons. But it has a different structural arrangement and it will actually react differently in chemical reactions because of that and have different physical properties. And there's another way, if I even keep my same four carbon chain, if I do this with the other two carbons. Now, I still have uh, my six carbons, I still have my 14 hydrogens, but I have another structural arrangement that's going to be different than the other two. Now, so that's what a structural isomers are. You have the same molecular formula, but you have different structures. And I show a hint down here. One way to verify that you have a different structural arrangement is to name the compounds. And if there's a different structural arrangement, you'll have a different name for the compound. So if we look at the names of this, this first one, since it's a nice straight chain, this would be hexane. So if, in that arrangement, the, word, uh, the molecule's name would be hexane. Here, you have a four carbon base, which is butane, but you have an ethyl group as a uh, substituent coming off that four carbon. So in this case, that would be a two ethyl um, butane, would be the name of this compound. And the third one, what you have now is two methyl groups as substituents coming off that butane base. So in this case, you would have a 2,3-dimethyl and then butane base. So you have three different names for the same um, molecular arrangement, say, or molecular formula. And by having the three different names, then you're verifying that you have three different structural arrangements. So let's take two other examples here and more of a methodology of how do you identify uh, in a methodical way whether you, uh, all the different structural isomers. So we're going to start with C5H12. And all we start with first is the straight chain. So I got five carbons. And that's going to be one isomer. Um, and um, just uh, if you can verify for yourself, if I added the hydrogens in here, you'll see I have uh, 12 hydrogens. So a straight chain of five carbons is one isomer. Now there's no other way I can arrange a straight chain of five. So that's one. So the next thing I would do is let's drop one carbon off. So now instead of having a five carbon straight chain, I have a four. And that still leaves me with an extra carbon. You know, I have an extra an extra carbon I've got to put somewhere. So if I put it on the first carbon, you should be able to recognize this really isn't any different than the straight chain five carbon. I just did an angle here. 
but it's still the longest chain is five carbons. So that is not one of the isomers. So that extra carbon has to go on one in the middle. And now I have a different structural arrangement for five carbons. And you also should be able to recognize I, I can't put it on the next carbon because that's just a flip of the one I already have. So there's only one way I can do a four carbon base and add that one carbon and be unique. So here's a second isomer for a C5H12. Now that I've exhausted the four carbon base, I'll go to a three carbon base. And with a three carbon base, I now have two extra carbons I, I, that I have to put on. Again, if I put them on the first one, um, that's going to result in one of the ones up, sorry, one of the ones up above. So that's not going to work. So I have to put the carbons on the middle uh, carbon here. And if I put them together, the two like that, you'll see this is again just a butane base. So it's number two up there. So I can't put them both like that. I have to separate it this way. And that's going to be the only arrangement I can do with a three carbon base. And there really isn't any way to do a two carbon base and add three more uh, carbons onto it. So you can verify this self, go through this exercise. There are only three isomers of C5H12. And we can verify with some names, this would be a pentane, because it's a straight chain five. This next one is a butane base with one methyl. So it's a two methyl uh, butane. And the last one here has two substituents and their methyls off of propane. So here you have a 2,2-dimethyl propane. So those are the three unique names you have. Now as another example, move this out of the way here. Another example now, and this is very common in the, in the textbook, to so go through isomers where you not only have carbon and hydrogen, but you also have another substituent, in this case, bromine. And so you're going to start the same way, only it's a little bit more complicated because you have a bromine to move around. Always start with your straight chain. So I have a C4 here. So if I just do four carbons, that would be um, one of my, uh, that's the base, and then I have to add a bromine. So I can put a bromine here, and that's going to be one uh, unique way of doing the four carbons in a bromine. Now I try to say, is there another way I can put the bromine on there and be unique from the number one there? And there is if I put the bromine on the second carbon. Now that's unique from the first one. So there's another isomer. If I move the bromine to the third or the fourth, you should be able to recognize that's the same as one and two here. So that's all the isomers I can do with a straight chain of four. Now if I have three, now I'm going to drop down to three carbons because I'm done with four. I have an extra carbon I have to put on. I can't put them on the ends or else I go back to number one or two. So I'll have to put the carbon on the middle. So here's a unique uh, carbon arrangement now and I still have to use a throw a bromine somewhere so I'll start with putting one here and that's going to be one unique isomer so here's my third and then I think is there another way I can put a bromine on there and be unique you should be able to recognize is I can't put them on the other two outside carbons because that again essentially is the same thing as number three. So the only other place I can put a bromine is on the center carbon here. And that's going to be unique. And then you'll see that's as far as you can go. 
So you work your way down from first to four carbons and then three carbons. And uh, now we can check on the names. The first one here is going to be a, a one bromo butane. The second one is just be a two bromo butane. I'll just abbreviate here. The third one, now we have a propane base with a bromo on, we could say a one bromo propane. Um, and I'm neglecting there that I also have a methyl group. So I have a one bromo and a one bromo, let me do this right. One, let me write it out, bromo, two methyl, and then propane. And then the next one, you're going to both are on two. A two bromo, two methyl, propane. They do get pretty complicated in naming. But I have my four unique names and four unique isomers here for a C4H9Br. And so um, try to work your way down. Uh, they, these types of problems sometimes uh, take a little bit of time and a little bit of imagination as you work through it. But um, uh, remember the hint that if it is a unique isomer, then it's going to have a unique name to it. Thank you.